I, I want to start with the Echo Show, this wall-mounted Echo with a much larger screen that you imagine being a sort of family connection hub where you can share calendars. It could also double as a kitchen television, for example. How do you imagine this changing the family dynamic of the future? Yeah, as a parent, uh, you know, I've lived through the life of trying to juggle uh, three kids, uh, shuffling them around to various soccer games, and our kitchen was a, a montage of sticky notes and uh, things on the refrigerator. And, I, you know, technology can have, help solve that. And we think this idea of ambient intelligence and something that's hanging on your wall can not only entertain you through television, but at the same time can help you get more organized by, you know, common family calendar and to-do notes and those kinds of things done, done in a sort of new way, in a, in a 21st century way. The biggest talker has to be the Astro robot, you know, sort of a step beyond Alexa on wheels. We have seen robots like this unveiled in China, and I'm curious what the data is telling you about whether or not consumers really want something like this, and if you see this becoming a mass market consumer device. Well, as you said, Astro is our new robot that we launched today. It's always a good day when you get to launch a robot. Uh, and, and what it is is, is this idea that, uh, that we can do more if we can bring technology to you in an ambient way throughout your house. So it's mobile. It can travel throughout your home. And I've had it, I guess, on and off for about a year now. And certainly the home security use case resonates very, very highly with me. You don't necessarily want to put cameras in every room of your house. And this way it can patrol through your house uh, when, you, when you're away. Uh, and also the idea that it might give you peace of mind. So giving this to my father, uh, who's 85, you know, I love him. He's very mobile. But, but giving me the ideas and, and reminders that he's up and about and being able to communicate with him in an instant and with Alexa together to have the ability for him to call if anything might go, go awry. What does the update cycle look here? I mean, A, does the price come down below $1,000? Does Do you add arms to this device? Does it, you know, go up and down stairs eventually? Well, I think with the technology that we have today, a single floor robot at this price point is, uh, it was incredibly hard to invent. I will tell you that it was, uh, was not easy. There's, you know, there's a lot more power inside of this than in your high-end smartphone that you have today. It's, it's, it's packed full of AI technology, also has wheels, motors, safety systems. Uh, I think long term, though, if you look at a five or 10 year horizon, the pace of invention around AI, around robotics will allow us to do more. Now, whether or not we get to stairs at that particular point at an affordable price, I'm not sure yet. But I do know that the, the pace of innovation around robotics is accelerating, not decelerating. How do you think about whether all of this technology in our homes is actually good for us or if it's encouraging, you know, an over reliance on devices and you know, not enough using our, our own brains. Well, I'm an optimist, first of all, but I would also say that's kind of what we, we, we see. We share that view in that technology uh, should not always be front and center. I used an example today that, you know, I often go home and all my kids are in corners of the house, you know, staring at their phones, and I'd rather have them heads lifted up, enjoying what's going on around us. So what we're trying to invent with this idea of ambient intelligence is, yes, we're using technology, but we want it to fade into the background. When you're not in front of it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be front and center. It's, it's like our original device, the Kindle. It just faded away and lets you get lost in your author's words. So two things can around your house do that as well. And when it's working, you'll know it because, you know, customers, your family, you can be enjoying music all together. You can watch a movie together. You can be communicating with a new product like with uh, Amazon Glow uh, together. And when you're not using the technology, like I said, it fades away and you don't have to worry about it. You know, I want to ask you about technology because you did talk about privacy uh, a number of times here, but there seems to be this broad distrust of big tech in general right now and data collection overall. Amazon is facing a number of different complaints about how much information Alexa is collecting about them. How do you earn that trust while rolling these devices out simultaneously? Well, I, I think you said it well, which is we have to earn trust of our customers every single day. It's not something that you get to put in the bank and, and hold for a long period of time. We have, to, we have to always be earning trust. And to do that with these kind of products, also true of phones and consumer electronics in general, 
is I, I believe and we believe that you have to make privacy and security foundational of these products. It's just at the very core of everything that we do. And the, the form that takes for, for a customer is give them control of their data. Let them be able to uh, delete it whenever they want. Let them automatically delete it at 90 days or 180 days if they so, ch if they so choose. If we do have cameras in the home, let's put uh, shutters in front of the camera so that when they're closed, a uh, customer can have peace of mind, that there's not, there's not a camera there. And it, the list goes on and on. But we're, we have to constantly be inventing uh, new ways to earn that trust, and, and that is by making sure privacy is front and center.